Hi my dear Flustook friends, this is Needle Ninja, welcome to my channel. In this video I'll be demonstrating a parking technique which I call snake method. I use it for uh, full coverage pieces which I'm stitching on, basically mostly Heaven and Earth Designs project. And even I made a video about how I stitch on these projects like six months ago. Uh, in that time I was working with a paper chart, now I'm working with a pattern keeper, so I made slight changes uh, to this technique. So even for you who are familiar with this technique, uh, maybe you can find something new, something interesting. And because I've got a few questions from uh, you guys asking me how I use this snake method, I will go step by step. Mm, trying to explain all there is, all I know about it and mm, I will talk about the way I do it I will not talk about the way it's uh, maybe you can change it like this way or that way no, it's totally up to you if you want to do some changes please feel free and please let me know if you find something even more uh, easy or comfortable so Basically, I will just talk about the things I understand and what makes me, what makes my stitching comfortable for me in this time. So, hope we can have fun together. And first, I will um, I will explain it on this paper, and then we can go to stitch with me part where I will use my pattern keeper and using this snake method stitching with you and maybe you can concrete the things I will say in the first part so yeah just basically let's just have a fun okay so first of all again this will be just about how I do it not the other way okay the things I understand I will explain step by step okay so let's go for it let me oh sorry let me get closer a little bit here and okay snake method first of all i need to say that uh, i'm using only the half stitches or you can say 10 stitch but it's just only one leg of the cross stitch and i always do this line this diagonal part the one and the only rule i think which i never broke is that I park my thread always in a left bottom hole, left lower corner. So when I park my thread, I let it hang from this hole. Okay, let's just imagine this is a full cross, okay? And so when I stitch this stitch, I will do this one leg and I will continue to do so for all my stitches, okay? Cannot stress enough. The important of picking your one hole where you will always park for me it's this one okay so now we know I'm doing all the only the half stitches which I feel um, I'm basically stitching on a 25 count fabric uh, with uh, two two threads over one uh, thread of, uh, thread of the fabric and it gives me good enough coverage. I'm totally satisfied. So half stitch, two over one, two over over one. Okay. Now let's get to the actual snake method. So how I do it and why I call it snake method. Well, basically, as I wrote it here, uh, what I um, the, another rule which I try not to break. Sometimes I do, but whatever. Sorry, somebody was <laughs> just sending me something, so many files, and I kill it already, so we're good here. So, another rule here, and which actually makes it the snake method, it's that every odd row, which means row number one, three, five, seven, nine, I stitch from left to right, and every even row, two, four, six, eight, ten, I stitch from a right to left so which means in here so first row will be stitching this way 
second row will be stitching this way and so on and so on okay i'll just mark it so you understand and when we come to the first row of the next grid i'll be starting again from the left to right then right to left and left to right and that's how i do that my snake method i work with a 20 stitches so it means two grids and i work a row by row and because as i told you this direction gives me the snake kind of motion first row i stitch from left to right then i do a u-turn stitch from the right to left again coming back so this is this is the why i call it snake method okay so i this is totally just uh, for a, a, a demonstration only i pick a three uh, symbols so i will explain i always start my uh, work my patterns from well not always yeah let's say if i always start in a right uh, left top corner of the fabric i will do it this way there is one chart uh, one project i didn't start like that but that's not for this video so okay first um symbol let's work with this heart symbol so let's say this is the fresh chart and i'm starting so i will start with the loop start from the front of the fabric i will stitch this one look from left to right in this row for another same uh, symbol so i find it here i'll stitch these two i i'm keep uh, uh, following the line then I found this heart and I come back to the end of the grid line and I see there is no more so I'll turn and I find that there is a next symbol from uh, because second line we stitch from right to left I find this symbol and I park it here and I just line, let the thread hang then I pull my needle out Rethread the needle, and because we're starting the new pattern, if there is, if it's already, if you work with this pattern and there is few uh, part uh, thread, you will just rethread that. If not, you will start your new thread. Let's say this is we will work with this dot symbol. So I start the thread by the again by the loop start, and I'll work in the left from from left to right direction and I'll stitch these stitches and I know there are stitches uh, under them but I will check first what I will do I will check this first row and I see there are none so then I will turn and go from right to left and I find the first symbol which I can park it here but because that's the slight change I, I start to do it's because there is already stitches there are already stitches about that I in this case I will stitch this one and again there is a stitch above so I will stitch this one so I actually work with this uh, dot symbol through the two lines then I come back to the grid line from the start and I will check from left to right and I find this another symbol in the second hole which has no um, already st stitched uh, stitches above that's why I'll park it in a low left low bottom and I'll just let it hang so we did two symbols already okay now let's go for the third symbol start starting symbol a again with the loop start and let's go for it let's stitch these two let's look for another one there is the one we will stitch him and let's see 
now uh, you can see that there are uh, same symbols over the grid line of course we will stitch this one and now it's up to you to decide how far you will go in my case uh, because let me show you the pattern keeper I'm using because I'm using like 20 stitches and I can see this is the most comfortable size for me to mark or work or slide or check or whatever so that's why I can see like almost 24 no, let's say 23 stitches that's why I'll do uh, it calls feathering I didn't know that but well I learned feathering means that uh, in order not to have this line if you just cut and you will just stick with the uh, 20 stitches always 20 stitches or 10 stitches maybe uh, because of your tension how you stitch maybe you will have this line in your work so in order to prevent that line I will do that feathering that's why I will do three more stitches and because this guy I cannot see him as you saw I cannot see him maybe I will move and check if there is more sometimes I do that but well yeah it doesn't you don't need to so Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If I, if this is the last guy, maybe I will slide my pattern keeper and stitch him. But in this case, let's just say the maximum I'll go 23 stitches. So I stitch this, this one. Then we turn and we know that the second line is going from right to left. So even if it's over the grid line, I'm feathering. So I'm going and because there are stitches above, I will go and stitch these two. Okay then I need to find where, where to park or maybe I can continue stitching and I find the letter A here but because there is no stitch above yet I will just park this thread okay so in this way in this kind of you know technique no this kind of technique I use for all the stitches in the first uh, row okay so let's say we did all of those so the first row is covered with the stitches yay now we move to the second row so I will find the first symbol and in this case the first symbol is already parked because it's this heart so I will just thread my needle stitch him and even I can see because with a pattern keeper you will have all the same symbols highlighted so it's really easy to find the, another symbol and I will see that these guys are really close to this one and maybe it will you will feel like you want to stitch them but because there are no stitches above I will just forget about this and because I'm trying to stick with my uh, snake method I will just continue from right to left looking for the heart symbol I find it here and there is already stitch above I will stitch this guy then look for it till the end of the second row there is no more so I will turn and I will look it look for the heart symbol from a uh, right uh, left to right and I find this guy there is no stitch above so I'll just park it and let the thread hang okay so we're still stitching the second row so we have a park this one and let's see okay let's say that there these are the symbols that we already stitched some symbols and we come to the A the symbol A now this is our park thread and we want we will of course thread the needle stitch him and let's look for a, another A but actually in a pattern keeper you will see that there is no more letter A because the the symbols are highlighted so you know that there is no more of symbol A in here that's why I will check here still there is no symbol so uh, if there is no more symbols over 20 stitches maybe I will pull my thread like 20 stitches that's a maximum I will maybe go and I see there is no more so I will just what I will do 
what I used to do. It's just pull the thread under the fabric about eight or 10, maybe sometimes 11, 12, doesn't matter how comfortable, it, doesn't, doesn't, it matters how comfortable you are or maybe in this area if there is a lot of park, already park threads, so you will find a clean area. And what I used to do is just find some hole, bring up, bring up your needles, uh, make a diagonal line through two, two stitches, then push your needle down and come up from here and just hang your thread, cut it about, about this long. So that's how I end my thread. And what I find it, when I found it, no, what I find, this uh, kind of ending my thread, it's really comfortable because I really don't like to flip my uh, Q snaps every time. So I, I'm ending this thread on the front of the fabric, comfortable, but uh, last, uh, yeah, like two weeks ago, I start to stitch on something which had uh, 200 colors and it was like confetti heaven or hell or whatever you call it. So there was stitch and park thread everywhere. So if I use this, it just became even more messier and even more, you know, just park thread and ended thread and wow. So that's why I start to do the different kind of things. Again, I'm, I finish it on uh, top of the fabric, but in this case, let's say this letter A, the symbol, again, I will pull my thread seven or 10 rows under, bring it up from some hole under it, and I will just pull my thread and I will just cut it like, you know, this long. <laughs> it's like three millimeters, maybe, and I will cut it. What will happen? I'll be sure that uh, I will not make a mistake for is it parked or is it not parked, or uh, how do you say, like, you will not have so many threads in a parked area and end it. Um, I, I'm sure you know what I mean. So this is this will be just this little tiny nothing. And as I start to work with it, I realize that it's till you get actually to this to this part, the thread because it's really short, it will automatically, of course, it will automatically be covered by other stitches above it. And plus it will be naturally pulled under your fabric. So when you get up, when you come to this point, the thread is almost non-visible. If it, if it is, I will just, you know, stick my needle there and just push him down. But basically it will just hide under the fabric. So that's a cool thing. Mm, something which I don't like about it, if I make a mistake or not even a mistake, you know, if I see that, for example, I did that, I cut my thread here and as I'm stitching, I can see that this uh, stitch got a little bit loose. Am I right? How, how to say that? There's no, you know, I cannot pull it. So it's in that case, I, I prefer this method because there is always a tail. And if you see that some of your stitches are maybe getting a little bit uh, loose, loosen, I'm all right. You just pull this thread. So, but now I'm being kind of careful and uh, I don't, yeah, I don't get the loose, loosen. I don't get the stitches loosen often. So I'm good with this way of parking, uh, not parking, ending the threads, but I, I will show you when we stitch together. Okay. Okay. So we end the letter A and let's say we stitch all of these guys so we finish the second row and my video is already too long so i should i should speed it up okay 
stitch this one we are in a third row stitching from a uh, right uh, sorry left to right and we have a park thread which is this one okay we stitch him of course and then we go again like this searching for a same symbol in a pattern keeper you will automatically know that there is only one there and the other ones are here so now how to uh, decide which of these three uh, holes you should park your thread well we know that this is a second line which we stitch from the right to left that's why the first symbol okay let's do this one so the first symbol from right to left will be this guy so that's why if there are no stitches above of course there are not because we are here right i will park my thread in here why not in here because as i learn with my mistakes if i'm not uh, careful of these you know this snake motion and i park my thread in here okay let's say we park it here i will work with my stitches i will stitch this okay i will be okay and then i come to this guy which now we don't have it because i park it here right and well i'm not that clever i realize i will not check that okay this one if you if you see two more stitches to the left there you will see that this guy is parked but no me you know i'm always like oh there's nothing in here so i'll just look it for my in my uh, you know bobbing case and bring the new thread thread the needle start this thread i will stitch here here and then i will realize oh my gosh i have it parked here so that's why i always stick with this motion and the first symbol i get i'll park it park my thread there so my dear friends i think that's all there is to explain with this paper if i forgot something maybe i will get to it when we stitch together and hopefully it's 18 minutes already i will try to speed it up so let's try to do just one or two rows together and let's see well i hope that you understood what i'm trying to say and how i do that and okay just let's do some practice with the real thing okay okay so here we go let's give it an actual stitching first of all i would like to show you i'm not sure if you can see this little tiny something green dot that's my already ended thread from i think this area so you can see that it's actually hiding under well my camera is okay let's go here okay so this is my new way of ending the thread let's come back and this is the old way of me ending the threads the diagonal line and let the thread hang so okay if you watch some of my videos especially on this project you will i think you will understand it but anyway today let's stitch this part together with a pattern keeper so let let me get ready okay so i think we're good so as you can see these are my park threads and uh we will today we will be starting in a row number five which is <clears throat> of course uh same uh, way of stitching like uh, row number one so again every odd row will go from left to right so let's pick this first symbol and i thread my needle and let's stitch him and let's look for another which there is not but you can see that in a sixth row 
there is a stitch there with the same symbol and because there are stitches above I will stitch him and let's see there is no more in a six row so let's go for a seven row there is only one and again there is a stitch above in this case I don't like to um, do this when there is a you know a thread in this hole where I have to put my needle in but in this case well yeah we're practicing so yeah let's stitch this one and then there is a stitch <clears throat> that's the new the same symbol it's three stitches from a grid line one two three three rows and three stitches right one two three so it's really difficult I will say it again working through the camera it doesn't take this long but I think we're good so on a pattern keeper I will mark my park thread and I will mark my already stitched threads so let's go from the next symbol which is this arrow thread my needle <coughs> and as you can see in this row there is only one and let's see there is row five six seven eight row which we know we're stitching from uh, every <coughs> odd row we're stitching from right to left so the first symbol we will park the arrow which we will park is this one okay let's mark him and we're done with this one okay letter e pick your thread what's good about this method is that you always have a free hole to start your thread or you have always you know it's nice to start in a new hole so there is one one nothing and one more E Then we continue to check there is no more and in six row there is one on a grid line and again we count we we go from right to left so the first one we park is this one I'm sure you're getting the idea what I was talking about on paper and I always try to find the <laughs> nice row where I can explain all these things but all rows are different so okay we're there there is no more in this row and we check and we go from right to left and because there are stitches above we will continue stitching these three arrows And in the next row there is only one and again stitches above so I will do him let's mark what I'm doing I did this <coughs> and this one and let's find the first closest which is the one on a grid line in a ninth row right and we'll park it there something okay triangle double triangle I'm trying not to make this uh, video too long because I'm afraid that I will not up I cannot upload it sorry I need to change my needle so only one in this row no more in the sixth row and right under in the seventh row there is one so we park it here we stitch this one let's go for this triangle which is really short thread so I'll be able to show you how I end it and I will end it my new way 
So let's stitch these two. And maybe I will stitch a little bit more there, but okay. Let's just end it and it's this is fifth row, so I'll pull my thread around here. So it's around nine row, rows, nine rows behind and I'll cut it, pull it, and cut it like this short. Okay. So we'll just mark our threads. Let's go for the next symbol. So as you can see, all of my threads are parked in a left low hole and there's no more in this row and in a sixth row you can see that there we start with this thread but because there is no stitch above, I will just park him oh, and mark this one. Okay, next little square. To him go to the to the end of the grid line and in the sixth row you can see that there is a <clears throat> one here okay now you can see that we don't have this thread parked there but I made him ready so I'm not sure if I said that but of course you could figure it out, I'm stitching two over one, two thread over one mm, in a fabric and I pull my thread in, in a half and I start with a loop start from the front of my fabric. There is a video <coughs> of me demonstrating how I start a lot of different starts so please if you're interested check it out and we will go with this symbol till the end of the line nicely I love when there are after a very heavy confetti area if there is some single color rows and then I got bored I get bored so then I'm really looking forward or enjoying again the confetti part so yeah I'm that kind of weird stitcher and let's see we are already over the grid line and we should go two stitches over a grid line yes I will do that and then because there are stitches above we can continue with this one and my another way must have think is a grid I'm really I cannot do the work without the grid and let just let take care of this guy so there is no more in the six line six row so let's go to seventh row which we know we're stitching from left to right and there is like one, two, three, nothing stitches and this one. So we will park him, mark these and these. <coughs> Sorry. And what I was talking about that I already cannot see my grid. So that's why I really don't care. I just take my water erasable marker, fabric marker. And I just go over my grid lines because really I'm, I'm always like wow for girls who doesn't use the grid lines I'll be totally lost and I think I will not I'll be not able to stitch actually so yeah must have grid lines how much is it is it it's 10 minutes okay let's do like a few more Let's stitch this one. Anyway, girls uh, and boys, I will continue stitching on uh, this pattern and like we can practice 
this snake method you can practice it with me if you like and I will do some more videos so stay tuned and I think we can have a fun together okay so let me use this last color for this video I'm always saying this is not a tutorial this is just the way it maybe sound like a tutorial but trust me it this is just I'm trying to explain my way of stitching and try to answer some of your questions which you gave me and again we can finish this one so just pull and now I will show you how I end my thread before so I will make this diagonal line in this project I am using and then snip you know, like here so your thread will not get loose because you can pull it out so I think I'll be, I'll be coming back to this uh, technique uh, because this project has uh, 98 colors well it's a lot but it's not 200 and you know it's not as messy as uh, let me show you let me show you this is the thing I was talking about you know it's just what's going on in here you know so that's why I start to cut my thread but it, again I will try to come back to this project in another video so bye for now and for today's video I think there is everything I should explain so I hope you got the picture and in my next video let's practice together I will work on this pattern and we can have a like a happy nice uh, relaxing time stitching together so for you who are watching my videos or who are commenting on it um, I really appreciate everything all your comments and I love them all I'm sorry I was really busy and I couldn't do anything but why I was busy that will be again for another video so but I'm reading it and when I will have a time I will reply so please keep watching them if you like it keep liking them and thanks for watching always thanks for supporting me and have a nice stitchy time well it's Monday busy week but anyway I'm sure we can find some time to stitch together okay so thank you and bye